Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel Houseplanty Goodness and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it around me. I generally talk about tropical houseplants. Now today I want to talk about a plant and I'm looking at it on the table in front of me which is maybe a bit of a challenge for some people but let's dive into it and you'll kind of see what I mean. So I'll bring up, this is a propagation of a propagation of a propagation and this, I'll bring it in a bit closer so you can see it clearly, is the Philodendron thoracosum and I'll bring it in so you can see the back of the leaves where very much the party is at so you can see some of the redness on the leaves and also the fuzzy petioles which is what connects the leaf to the actual stem of the plant. So the stem of the plant would be down here and these would be the petioles. And the reason why I've got a propagate in front of me and I'll kind of move out the way so I can show you, I've got one large varicosum that's growing here. These are some of the smaller more juvenile leaves and you can see it's growing everywhere and behind the shelf as well. So that is exceptionally difficult to film. There's also a large varicosum and I will put a picture of when I first got it in my care so you can see it here and it has since grown even larger than that considerably because that was almost a year ago and that is the plant that a lot of these propagations have come from but all of these are very difficult to show you so let's talk with a little propagation in front of me. So Overall, and I've done a couple of videos on varicosum care, and let's just go over some of the basics again. In terms of the morphology, it has got these very, very dark leaves. This specific varicosum, if I'm not mistaken, is the varicosum incini or incinii. I will add it up here as well. I know when I first bought this, there wasn't so many different variations of the varicosum, but there are now plenty. So that's what this one is. This one has got very, very dark leaves. The other thing, which I'm not sure if it's coming up on the camera, probably isn't, maybe. There's a slight, because there's a tiny bit of velvetiness to the leaves, when the light hits this plant in the right angle, there's a slight silver iridescence, which is very, very, very cool. Obviously, we talked about the hairiness of the petioles, and it is a plant that generally, for most varicosums, and I've propagated this into pond, it doesn't have particularly thick roots. Another thing that I've also found about this specific philodendron, it's one of the philodendrons that doesn't like going entirely dry. So getting it and watering it just on the cusp between moist and dry, so a moisture meter would generally be a good idea for here. I'm a bit extra, so I generally will use my moisture meter for most things. Obviously, it's tricky to do that with pond, the pond tends to be a bit more forgiving with underwatering and overwatering as well, specifically with the overwatering, which <laughs> I'm definitely uh, an overcarer. So I will overwater plants and I usually don't ever struggle with my plants in terms of underwatering issues. I will generally struggle with my plants with overwatering issues, which I think might be true about a lot of people. So the other thing I want to say about this is pests. And I know Kaylee Ellen on her channel, and definitely if you haven't checked out Kaylee Ellen, do go and have a look, search for Kaylee Ellen plants, and you should be able to see her channel. She has always made comments about this, and I will fully agree with her on this one. These plants are spider mite magnets. Always make sure whenever you're watering them to check both the front and the back of the leaves, they will get spider mites like that at the drop of a hat. And Almost I would say that this is as susceptible to spider mites as most allocations tend to be. So if you've got an allocation and you've struggled with spider mites for a long period of time, <laughs> you'll know what that means. Now the one thing I will say, and this is just in my experience from the very small amount of plants that I've propagated in pond, is that since moving my varicosum propagates into pond, I have not struggled with spider mites once. So take from that what you will, but definitely something to keep an eye out for is spider mites. Now with my varicosum, and this happened on the big plant that I showed you earlier on in the picture here, this is a plant that got mealybugs. 
and mealybugs generally aren't that difficult to treat. It can be a bit more of a challenge with the varicosum because in my experience, the mealybugs go and attach themselves to where the petiole attaches to the leaf and is generally the fuzziest part of the petiole, which makes it very difficult to remove them or even spray them down without potentially damaging some of that lovely hairiness on the petioles. I do like a hairy petiole, but that is something to bear in mind. That has just been my experience. I don't generally hear about mealybugs too much with other people, but that is something that I've found has been a bit more of an issue. But as I said in previous videos, it might just be that I generally struggle with mealybugs a lot more in this conservatory. So take from that what you will. In terms of lighting, this is definitely a plant that will appreciate bright and direct light. I would say as bright as you can possibly give it. If you start seeing the leaf, the leaves burning or bleaching slightly, bring it back. But in my experience, at least with this plant, I would rather give it more light until I figure out what light level it needs rather than starting it on lower light and then slowly moving it to brighter conditions purely because you'll get an indication of the light level that this plant needs faster that way. You might sacrifice the beauty of a leaf or two in terms of maybe crisping or some um, burning, some yellowing on the leaf. But for me, I think that is the fastest way to understand what light level it needs because generally I do find that my varicosum does better in that kind of bright indirect light and kind of as bright as you can give it towards full bright light that you would give maybe a succulent, but maybe not quite so much. Clear as much, <laughs> but it is a plant that will generally will like bright indirect light. So test it in your environment. I have recently done a video on lighting, volume of light, intensity of light for both natural light and grow lights was on my channel. If you haven't checked that out, do please go and check that out. You'll probably learn a few things. It's a slightly longer video, but from the feedback I've been getting so far, people did appreciate it because there's a lot to say about lighting. But back to this plant. Other than that, I have to say it's a relatively easy philodendron to grow. It's a relatively easy philodendron to propagate. It's not, in my experience, it's not a fast philodendron to propagate. Granted, I have mainly propagated uh, the varicosum from very mature chunks rather than ones with leaves on it. I'm sure if there was a leaf and a bit more of a succulent aerial root, it would root a bit faster. But in my experience, not the fastest in propagating, but when it does get going, it does really well. And again, in my experience, and it might be because I'm going for slightly more mature stems because my plant is as mature as it is, it does take a while. And interestingly, it will push out a leaf before it will push out roots, but it I might do a separate video on this. Sometimes when the stem is very, very mature and very thick, there's a lot of energy in that stem to both push out a new leaf and then push out roots, but doing it in that order, so leaf first and then roots, without it stressing out plants too much. If it's a much more juvenile stem cutting and it starts pushing out a leaf before it pushes out roots, there might be a bit of an issue, possibly. You can still, it'll probably still do okay, but just keep an eye on it. But yeah. I think that's what I wanted to say about this plant in terms of watering. As I said, most of this is now in Lechuza Pond. So I will water it when the pond goes dry. At the moment in my environment, in my location, it's once every seven to eight or nine days. And it just keeps on trucking on. The one thing obviously getting right about this is lighting if you can and check, 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 check for pests. Some people will give up on this plant because it can be so much of a pest magnet if you handle it. And I would suggest if you're not getting one just yet and you're planning on getting one, maybe give it its own location away from other things. So if it does get spider mites, you don't get a huge spider mite infestation in your environment. But truly, I still think this is a beautiful plant. I know there's issues, there's pests, but you can deal with it and sometimes do what I do. If, if it gets too many pests, treat the pets, cut it down, propagate it, get new plants, start all over again. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say about this plant for now. If you've got any questions, comments, as always, do drop them in the comments down below. I'd love to have that conversation with you. 
We're building a nice little community here at the moment. There's a lot of people that are interacting, which I'm loving. If you're not following me on Instagram and you want to check out what I post on Instagram, I do a lot of informational reels. I'll post updates on some of my more mature plants and give some care instructions. That's in the description as well. And yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.